Something feels wrong. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Dishonored 2. Of course, if you wish for no spoilers, I would suggest watching some of my other content. No less than two days ago, I played an altered press release variant of the Clockwork Mansion mission in the upcoming Dishonored 2. And given I was lucky enough to do so, I feel it is only fair that I share that experience with you. Now, when I say an altered variant of this mission, what this means is that we can only play within the second half of the mission, which takes part three to four hours into the game, and the difficulty had been tweaked to the player's advantage. Also, not all of the player character's powers are present. Each character had a specific beta build already set into the game. So Dishonored 2 takes place in the Southern European-inspired Kanaka, which leads perfectly into the fact that I'd like to touch on the setting. Personally, after playing what seems like endless Fallout 4, Dishonored 2's brighter, tempered, and less grim setting is a welcome one. Visually, I have been craving this design flavor for months. Now the art direction is absolutely stunning. The amount of unique architecture, texture design, void engine lighting and asset stylization all come together beautifully, ultimately creating a world you'll want to revisit multiple times, at the very least purely to soak in the thick fragrance of creative genius. This artistic direction shines ever so brightly in this Clockwork Mansion mission, as the level design is darkly calculated mathematically steampunk insanity. I I was blown away by the ever-morphing, three-dimensional interweaving and carefully placed webbing of nooks, crannies and passageways. Almost every room of this clockwork mansion can be shifted with the flick of a switch, metamorphing a bedazzling gallery into a crimson, chateaued and chandeliered library. With this ever-evolving brass citadel comes seemingly endless exploration. When a wall moves and a floor drops, you can slip and slide through the cracks, placing yourself into the very core of the house. Finding yourself in a sense behind the scenes in small passageways and tunnels often emerging into a perfect vantage point. Well, perfect for a silent assassin anyway. All in all, at the very least, the Clockwork Mansion is a genuine masterpiece of engineering and level design. Well done, hats off to Arcane for this one. Now all the while, as I'm sitting there with my jaw on the floor, watching a beautiful household fold into another before my very eyes, there is a mission to complete, and foes to defeat. So the overall feel of the gameplay is reassuringly stealth. It sticks very strongly to its roots, which is excellent in classic dishonored fashion you can kill everyone or finish the mission without anyone even knowing you were there. Which is saying something considering the Clockwork Mansion tracks you with senses and knows your every move. So now let's talk about the two characters, Corvo and Emily. Let's quickly touch on Corvo's gameplay. All the powers that he had in the press release build were the same as in the original Dishonored. Although there may be some, I personally didn't notice any differences with his powers. Playing Corvo is as fun as it was in the original Dishonored. And I think Corvo is a much more balanced character to play compared to Emily. Now that we're talking about her, let's deconstruct Emily. Emily brings three new powers with her. Probably more, but again, in this specific build, we had three new abilities. To be quite honest, overall, I found her new abilities to be quite overpowered compared to, of course, Corvo's. Instead of Blink, she has a Far Reach ability, which has the same functionality as Blink, but it can also target enemies and objects. Upon execution, this will pull these targets towards Emily in a flipping and tumbling fashion. This to me is far more powerful than Corvo's Blink. With the ability to bring targets to you, Emily never has to leave the safety of a sneaking position, whereas Corvo would have to blink out into an uncovered territory to reach his enemies. So Emily's Far Reach is superior. Secondly, Emily's Shadow Walk is, again, super powerful. This turns Emily into a gnarled, lanky and shadowy form that is undetectable and can walk across rooms like nobody's business essentially making it far easier to get around large groups of enemies undetected. Also, when in Shadow Walk form, attacking an enemy will be an instant kill, as far as I could tell anyway. Thirdly, Emily's domino ability is super duper powerful. This links multiple enemies together, giving them the same fate. Kill one of them, and they all die. A challenge I often face in Dishonored is how the hell do I get past this room full of multiple enemies without being detected, forcing me to come up with crazy and 
creative ways to defeat or sneak past a room full of foes. Well, this domino ability gets rid of that dilemma altogether. Linking the fate of several enemies means you only have to kill or neutralize one of them, and then every other linked enemy will suffer the same fate, which makes dealing with large groups an absolute walk in the park. So this domino ability killing three birds with one stone, it definitely has a slight haze of overpowered. Now with all of that said, overall I found Emily Caldwin much more powerful to play compared to Corvo, but it is not a cakewalk to play as Emily. It's just slightly easier than Corvo, and she is also more fun to play around, I think because she's a new character. But overall, my two hours of gameplay have left an excellent impression of Dishonored 2. Again, I only played half of one mission, The Clockwork Mansion, so I can't talk about the game as a whole because I haven't played it. But what I did experience, to put quite frankly, was just awesome. Seriously, I was not let down in any area. Everything is like Dishonored, but on steroids. For the most part, it's the Dishonored that we all know and love. But then it's been upgraded with insanely better level design, which is saying something compared to Dishonored, which had brilliant level design. It's got better graphics, it looks nicer because it's in a nice warm climate. The gameplay is as fun as ever. If anything, that's probably down to level design. You probably think I'm talking about the level design quite a bit, but after the Dishonored 2 play session, when myself and the others came out, all we spoke about was how awesome the level design was and how awesome Emily's new abilities are. So Dishonored 2 is quite honestly something to get excited about. If like me you'd never got into Dishonored, but you think this looks cool, you can pick up Dishonored 1 for around $12 on Steam. It's definitely worth a crack. I'd never played it until about a week ago and absolutely fell in love with it. And I suppose you'll just have to trust me when I say this, but Dishonored 2 is in every good way possible an upgraded version of Dishonored 1. So for those of you that are already hyped for Dishonored 2, from what I experienced, this is a game of the year contender, which of course translate to, it's going to be an excellent game well worth the purchase. Now if you do have any questions you want to ask me about the game, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to reply and answer the question fully. Remember, I only played for two hours in half of the mission Clockwork Mansion, so I may not be able to answer all of your questions about the game, but I will do my best. With that, I would like to thank you very much for watching. I am very grateful for having the chance to play the game early and share that experience with you all. Again, be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions or thoughts on Dishonored 2, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I've been Camel, and it's been an absolute pleasure sharing my Dishonored 2 experience with you.